In this video, we will show you how you can centrally manage one or multiple Forta switches from your Forta gate. As an example, we will start with one Forta gate, one Forta switch, and a management computer. Here's how we've cabled this network. We will link the Forta gate and Forta switch by using port 24 on the Forta switch to any switch interface port on the Forta gate. In this case, we will use port 14. With newer model Forta switches, look for a label indicating which ports are used for Forta link auto configuration, or refer to the documentation for your unit. We will manage the Forta gate from port 9, and the Forta gate will use WAN 1 for internet access. The next step is to enable Forta link on our Forta gate. We will need to remove port 14 from the internal interface in order for it to be dedicated to managing the Forta switch. Navigate to Network Interfaces. We will open the internal interface here and remove our connected port, which is port 14. Now to edit port 14. We'll name this port FortiSwitch1 in case we add more FortiSwitches in the future and enable dedicated to FortiSwitch. You can also use automatically authorized devices. I'll leave that unused to show you manual authorization in the next step. Now we need to connect to the switch. We will go to Wi-Fi and Switch Controller, Managed Forta Switch. Click Authorize. It may take a few moments before you see results, so wait a little bit and press Refresh. The link on the diagram is now a solid line, and the Forta link port is highlighted green. This means that it's connected. Using Edit, we can further label our switch as well as restart the unit remotely, and upgrade it by uploading a firmware image to it. Clicking on a port will bring in the Forta switch port list, which allows us to assign VLANs. This is also available directly from the main left sidebar. Let's go make some example VLANs in Forta Switch VLANs. Create new. I'll call this VLAN1, assign it a VLAN ID that isn't in use, and we'll assign it a color code to be used in the port list later on. Assigning an IP and network mask, and enabling DHCP, as well as device detection. Now we'll create a second VLAN. This one will start with 130.10. OK. Let's assign ports to these VLANs using four switch ports. I'll hold down shift on my keyboard and select ports 1 through 12. Assign them to VLAN 1. And now shift again and ports 13 through 23 will be on VLAN 2. I have now plugged in two test machines into ports in each VLANs, and have highlighted the ports with these black arrows here. We can also see the device name picked up by device detection here on port 9. My two machines have been assigned IP addresses in their respective VLANs via, via DHCP. Now to set up our first policy, allowing internet access. Policy and objects, IPv4 policy, create new. We will set the incoming interface to VLAN 1 to grant internet access here. Our internet facing interface is WAN 1, so I'll specify that in outgoing source all, and all destinations and all services. I will enable some security profiles as well. OK. My test machine in VLAN 1 is reconnecting to Skype and a few other services. Let's go verify that in FordView. FordView, sources. Here is the VLAN 1 test machine. I'll double click it. 
and we can check what it's been doing based on policy here. and by destinations as well, we can see that it has made some successful connections. By default, our VLANs can't see each other, so let's set up a policy where VLAN 1 can see VLAN 2. And let's also add some security profiles like AV scanning that will scan traffic between the VLANs. This is useful, for example, if we were to have mobile computers in one VLAN and storage computers in another, and didn't want to infect other machines by adding infected files to the storage server from the roaming computers. In service, we could use Samba or tailor this policy to any other service being used on the server. Now that we've shown you that the VLAN can connect to the internet, let's control that access. Go back to the VLAN configuration for VLAN 1 and I'm going to enable remote access for my next demonstration and enable captive portal security mode. Selecting an existing user group I have called testers and clicking OK. Now let's test that captive portal and the VLAN to VLAN policy we just made using our VLAN 1 test machine. I'm typing ipconfig from the prompt, and we can see that this is indeed the VLAN 1 machine. Now we're pinging VLAN 2, and we can see that our pinged VLAN 2 has failed. Let's ping fortnet.com as well to ensure we don't have internet access. And that's failed too. Navigating to a web page will bring us to the captive portal. Here we log in with the user that is part of the group that I'd added. And the Fortinet page displays as it should. I'll ping fortinet.com showing that it hasn't been cached. And it looks like we do have internet access. Let's try pinging VLAN 2 now. And we can see that it has succeeded. This test machine is already set up to use 8021x authentication. So let's enable that on the FortiGate and see how it operates on our test machine. I'm connecting to my FortiGate on the VLAN 1 address and going back to VLAN 1's configuration. Here I'll change the mode from captive portal to 8021x and the same group I used in the last example. Quite soon after, I'm presented with a network notification. Clicking the bubble will present me with a login page. I'll first demonstrate we can't access anything by pinging VLAN 2 again, failing as expected. Now entering my credentials. Now entering my credentials, and it looks like our pings to VLAN 2 are successful again. And FortiClient has reconnected too. These are just a couple basic examples of the fine and centralized control you can have when managing your FortiSwitch from your FortiGate. Thank you for watching, and for more technical videos, visit video.fortinet.com.